Unix Infotech to speak upon software man measurement. Hitesh Sangvi is a managing director of Unix Infotech, a process consulting leader, CMMI Institute partner, and organization development consultant. Hitesh Sangvi is a CMMI high maturity leader appraiser with high experience of 28 years with more than 200 organizations in 17 countries. He has received several awards and owned author books and articles and is known as a well orator in India as well as in abroad. He has contributed to CSI spins in last 20 years. He has successfully promoted best practice internationally using CMMI, Six Sigma, Balance Scorecard and Agile. Let us have a big round of applause for sir. Thank you very much for the kind words and respected uh, ladies and gentlemen. Measurement is a very big topic and uh, let's see how much I can do justice in about half an hour. So I'll, uh, beyond the slides, I'll uh, take some simple examples to pass on the message. So I'm going to use a balanced scorecard method to identify how do you define the measurements, metrics, and how do they link to the goal? So many times we want to say we want to improve the performance. And we want to identify what to improve. There are so many things to improve, right? Benchmarking, accuracy, measurements, planning. You'll have too many choices like a buffet. And you'll have so many standards to improve in terms of you know, ISO or CMI, Six Sigma, several tools, several methods. And again, we are lost. And the consultants will suggest so many things too. So the best thing that the management should do is to identify what are the problem areas, where they want to go in the long run. And that's where we use balance scorecard methods to identify what we should measure. So once you have your vision, mission, and values in place, you should have your strategy long term in terms of what you want to do, your strategic initiatives, and then you come to what exactly the outcomes that we want to do, like satisfied shareholders or customers, effective and efficient processes, or a motivated workforce. And that's where it starts. You know, the balanced scorecard gives you four key areas. One is financial. You want to improve returns, operating efficiency. This all relates to the M of money. You can only get this once your customers are satisfied. This is only possible once you are very strong on your internal delivery processes. So you need to measure that. And finally, the capabilities of your team. Need to identify the critical factors here. What are the goals in these areas? And then identify the measurements. When we go to many organizations, they normally give, OK, effort variance, kind of, uh, schedule variance, uh, uh, number of defects. So many times I ask them, why? This is some consultant told us, or this is happening since last uh, 10 years. But basically, what are your problems? Whatever are you measuring? Is it addressing your problems? And that's where we need to identify goal-driven measurement. So as a strategy, you need to identify what are your financial goals. It can be one year, three year, short term, long term. According to these objectives, you are going to identify the measures and then set your targets and then set the initiatives and put effort and money into you know, achieving them. So similarly, what are your customer objectives, internal process objectives? So this is a method by which these objectives should be linked upwards. Each objective should be contributing to the higher layer. Similarly, these measures should be also linked to a higher level objective. And same with the targets and the initiatives. And this is where you get an alignment, horizontally and vertically. And you can address all the perspectives, objectives over here. This can be at a division level, it can be at an organization level, or at a department level. 
And this is basically gives a very clear method of strategy-focused organization. So measurement starts from the top, rather than using standard methods. We can use the standard methods to satisfy basic needs, or satisfy the auditors, or satisfy the customers. But basically, you need to identify whether this particular measurement is helping me to project my performance or promote my performance towards a specified goal. I'm sure you have heard of you know, the MIAC method in Six Sigma. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So definition is very important to start with in the beginning. And then we start measuring, analyze, improve, and control forward. Let's look at uh, SMART goals. So when you, well, we are talking about goals and objectives. And I'm sure you have heard of SMART, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time bound. Any example on this? OK, I'll try to put it in simple words. Take it on a lighter note. Once my wife asked me, what do you do for a living? I said, then I introduced her to one of these workshops. And she learned smart. And that night, guess, there was a havoc. She said, tell me some of the things that you normally tell me. So I said, OK, I love you so much that one day I will make you very, very happy. She said, OK, let's apply smart. <laughs> so specific, I'll be happy with uh, two bangles, golden bangles, and a, a list followed. Measurable, it cost around this price. It was in lakhs. Actionable, yes. I've identified the three gold merchants there. And uh, is it relevant? OK. You have the bank balance. I've checked it out. Time bound. We can. You can finish it by today evening. The shops are open till 8 o'clock. Well, you can have similar examples in your workplace. I just want it to be simple. You know, when, when, we, when we are looking at so many metrics, we get many times a list of metrics that the organization you know, uses. So we ask them, why do you measure this? Many times there is no answer. I was in Brazil, and uh, one quality manager, he gave me a list of about 32 metrics that he has done. They were looking at some CMI level four. And I said, 32 metrics for what? How many goals do you have? They said, four. Four goals and 32 metrics. You need to check whether some of these metrics are related to, are they critical to cost, critical to quality, critical to knowledge, schedule, or growth? Now, depends upon the organization whether some of these goals that are written over here, objective selection. So before selecting metrics, you have to select your objectives and goals. And see whether satisfaction of these goals is high for critical to schedule, or it will add to the growth. If it is a product organization, there will be more about critical to knowledge, because you are building the knowledge. Critical to quality, if at all, again, it's a product organization, and this is critical to cost. So this is an exercise you should do to validate your goals and then come to your metrics. All the metrics will not promote to all the goals together. Sometimes there is a goal tree. So if you want to maximize profits, you got to look at customer satisfaction and reduce cost, improve productivity. Again, you have some of the trees and branches coming down. And you have to start control, measure this, and control this first as a priority, rather than directly working on this. So I think uh, they contribute stepwise. And you need to know very clearly which metrics will increase velocity towards which goal. And then, once we have identified, the prioritized, identified and prioritized the goals, then you identify the, and prioritize the metrics and measurements that you want to do. Once you do this, then you start your measurement program. You come out with uh, which measurement is more critical, right? So if you are looking at your goal of increased customer satisfaction, then you have to put more focus on these areas, project planning. And these are high and very high. Or if it is improved productivity, then again, you have to put more focus on this. So metrics, if you have 32, God bless you. Keep on measuring. It's very costly. 
try to rationalize to a couple of few of them which are more relevant and more directional towards achieving your objectives. That's the, that's the message that we need to you know, uh, absorb. And then we have a long list. Oh. You can pick up the right ones from the long list. But then as I told you, do the exercise before as we said. Link them towards your goals and then pick the right ones. You can then do a deep dive into each one of them, identify which is the goal. Look at a question. There is a goal question matrix. I mean, you'll find it out uh, from the you know, media in terms of uh, it should address and answer some of your questions, right? Unit of measurements, formula, source, frequency, criteria for analysis. Then you can proceed with the details of looking at what type of metrics we need to do. There are some more here too. Looking at size, we normally find, if at all we ask, what's the size of the software? 80% of the time is these many man months. And that's an effort. And size is left out. So uh, basically size is a base, and then on the basis of that, you build on efforts. So after collecting the metrics, I think we have several areas for analysis. Why do we collect metrics? What's the use? Hello? Sorry? Yeah, so that is, you know, looking backwards, know where we are. In a car, we have a big screen in front of us and the side screen, which, you know, they are very small. We got to quickly have a look where we are, right? And what do we want to do then? We want to predict. We want to estimate further. We want to see where we are and how long will it take me to reach that particular objective. So you need to do analysis, which is backwards. You need to do prediction, which is forward. If you are not doing analysis and not doing prediction, then you got to look at, again, the purpose of are we using the right metrics? Again, you'll go back, talk to your chief, and then you'll find out, well, this is not mapping to our goals. That's why we are not doing it. So it's very important that we do analysis and uh, prediction for metrics. There are various tools available. Some of them, uh, you know, we have basic statistical tools, like, you know, you have Pareto, or you have uh, flowcharts, you have check sheets, you have histograms, you have control charts, correlation, regression. You got to select the right ones, depending upon the data type of the metrics and how you'd like to you know, use them. Control charts. So the right type of vision mapped with the right type of goals and objectives, proper definition, priorities, and then selecting the right metrics, and then analyzing them for the right type of backward analysis, that is the lag, and uh, further analysis for prediction. These are the various methods by which we do it. I think this is in a nutshell that I'd like to share with you. If you look at, uh, I'll just take, yeah, this is cause-effect diagrams. <coughs> I'll just share with you something <clears throat> to make uh, the analysis part simple. Let's say we have several, you know, there's a defect chart, and you find out, uh, you know, out of 100 defects, these are the attributes. And uh, you draw a Pareto, you find out the top two contributors, or top three contributors, and then you start, you know, the one is called specification, wrong specifications. And once you do that, You'll uh, use some methods called, you know, f I'm coming to some more methods, but pie chart, etc. However, you know, the right method is also very important because sh can you use pie charts everywhere? What is the fallacy in using pie charts? Sorry?
yeah percentage format otherwise you know they are rel they are relative if you draw two pie charts for two months for the same amount of work done but different types of defects so they are relative i may be doing the exactly the same type of work but depending upon the other quadrants of pie chart if it if others are doing better then it's it's a relative just like you know it is in school we we have uh, you know percentile so it's relative to the performance of uh, other pies right okay, we just discussed this well uh, this is a real time diagram where you know if there is a high schedule variance you look at so many causes using a fishbone diagram and you find out you color code them about relevant and non relevant i'm sorry you can't see that but it's it's this is real and probably you can uh, <clears throat> understand what we are trying to say and out of this one of the key items that you find out is wrong specifications so you, you further drill down into the wrong specifications and you come to one more level of uh, specification defects and again do further analysis you can use statistics also here to identify which are the areas where if you apply causal analysis then you can you know Uh, do it better because you may have so many problems and so many causes you can't handle all of them and that's where you use 80 20 or if you're looking at uh, again these are the defect this is a defect chart and let's say i i'm operating with these defects for each delivery this is a control chart with a central limit you know at 22 and upper and lower control limit of 0 to 45 and i go for business and i say you know dr gupta ji i want to give you some services dr gupta says but these are the defects boss you are transferring these many defects to my business and who is going to take care of all this hard work why don't you improve and come back so i go back and segregate all these defects into different types of defects i draw eight different control charts because now i'm using divide and rule and finding out outliers from each of the sub categories and removing these outliers using corrective corrective and preventive actions and after 3 months again i go back because now i have removed more most of these root causes for the defects and again plot my chart and i find that well now it is sir it initially it was 45 here now i've come to 24 and this is also released from 22 to 15 so can i get some business from you so you'll tell me well along with you lot of other people are also improving so this is still not sufficient because you are going to transfer these defects to my work good work keep on doing it and that's where we will uh, you know look at uh, continuous improvement so whenever you are looking at metrics you need to look at when you say demiac improve and control how much you want to improve and how much you can control don't measure something that you can't control because you will not be able to predict you will not be able to predict lot of metrics when we ask uh, you know the managers how many metrics are you controlling out of this they said no they are happening let's take an example i have uh, risk exposure index okay i'm sure risk exposure index i'm sure you you know it's a combination it's a multiplication of probability and severity is it a real matrix and can i predict risk exposure index versus another matrix called defects and defect density matrix risk exposure index and defect density matrix so defects are real right they happen is risk real sorry yeah but the risk okay which has happened is not a risk it's a problem ha huh. we can predict but is it real if okay just for example if i am uh, 
If you have to do a training program on subject X tomorrow, it's a risk for you. For me, I do it many times. It may not be a risk for me. The same event, risk is a function of time, context, and competence. Right? It may vary depending from person to person. So as soon as you change the responsibility of the task, the risk comes down. So anyway, whereas defect, defect remains as a defect because it happened. You're not going to say depending on any other you know, parameters. So whenever you are looking at metrics, see that if you are trying to predict them, some of them are only for analysis. You may not be able to predict. Some of them you can predict. So always identify what you want to do with the metrics before you actually run into spending so much of time on money, time and money on analysis and collecting through tools. It's a very, very costly activity. A very costly activity. Right. I'd like to take some questions, if any. Okay. So I'll I'll end with huh. They can be measured. Any variable can be measured. You have to find out the attribute of that, which is varying. You can measure it. However, prediction, you need to see. They can, pre pre they can be predicted also. But how useful it is. Ultimate goal or? Return. I find as soon as I see metrics in any organization, we walk into organizations many times. Every week we walk into an organization. We see, is this useful metrics, or they are doing it just because uh, you know somebody has told them, or it's a part of legacy. Whereas there are some problems which they are not addressing, and key metrics are not identified, rather than the theoretical metrics are taken. And when you do analysis, you have to share it with people so that you get the perspective of that. That's the use of metrics. Otherwise, there are so many charts. Many times, you know, the managers show us. For example, they showed me about so many uh, control charts. I said, what do you do with that? Who drew these control charts? They said, Excel. OK, what did you do? I'm showing it to you. I said, where's the analysis? Show me some action item. What, what did you do? What did you learn out of it? <laughs> oh, oh, this is going up, so it is improving, this is going down. You need to use them. Otherwise, don't do the whole exercise. If the whole exercise comes as a package. And the purpose of uh, the, the key message that I would like to put across is do it end to end, driven from the goal. The way we do it, I'll just share for two minutes. Uh, the way we do it in my organization. So there's a weekly analysis and there's a monthly analysis. In the monthly analysis, I participate, and there are a lot of numbers coming through. We sometimes decide that these numbers should not be measured now onwards. Instead of that, we should measure something else, because we have already improved over here. These are stable processes, and we need to improve in some other processes. So we need to measure that. So there is always metrics or numbers going in and out. It doesn't happen that for five years, you keep on singing the same song. And after a month, it's like, uh, I would say it's like a dance performance. Somebody's performing on the floor, some classical dance. And uh, there are some very good numbers, some goals are achieved. So there is an applause. And then there are some downsides. So everybody is, you know, tapping their feet. And uh, there are uh, some areas where, uh, you know, we need to take care and communicate to everybody. So somebody talks loud. Tabardum, tabardum, tak, tak, tak. And there is some noise. And then there are some pointers, blame games towards each other. Right? Like the mudras, you know. Pataka, tri pataka, sukhatundaka. There are mudras in dance where they point towards each other. Everything happens there. And finally, we look at what, what all numbers we should improve in the next one month and the quarter. And there, that's, that's what we write down as a script, that these are the action items that we need to do. And that's where, from numbers, we go to initiatives. And that's where it goes on uh, 
we define the noise of the next month and the next quarter. Tabardum, tabardum, tak, tak, tak. So this was in brief. I think instead of 30 minutes, I've done it in 25 minutes. But at a later stage, whenever we get a chance, we'll elaborate in a more retail uh, you know, forum. If there are any questions I'd like to take. Last one. Thank you, sir, for shedding some light on the topic. Uh, now I would like to welcome Ms. Anjali Mogre to felicitate Mr. Hitesh with a small token of appreciation. 